We're here at the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2014 in Busan, South Korea, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mohammed Ibrahim, who is Minister for Telecommunications and Post for Somalia. Minister, it's very good to see you again. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. Nice to see you again. This plenipotentiary conference comes at a challenging time for the ICT industry, a time of great opportunity, but also a time when issues like financing new network capacity is becoming critical. In a fast evolving environment, what do you think needs to be done to ensure that everyone will get the access they need? Well, I think this is a very topical question, and I'm happy that you asked the question. You, you're right, financing ICT is becoming a very, um, I suppose, a complicated question for all. And the reason is, as we move forward, and we have a bigger role for the, uh, the, the private sector, th there seems to be a need for finding a better way or better business model to finance this sector. In my case, in Somalia, the, the telecommunications sector and the ICT is mainly in the hands of the private sector. And even more so, that's why it's very important for us as a minister in the government to make sure that universal access is available. If I use an example in Somalia where fiber has landed, which means more capacity is available, and we're allowing universities and the ministries to get access, we're noticing the need for business model where we can find finance to enhance these capacities. So to me, I think the way forward is to find a bigger role for governments. This might be contrarian view. Some people might say we are moving towards a business model where the market will have to play a bigger role. But to me, I think there needs to be a balance a need for public-private partnership. I think that's the way forward. And what are the priorities for Somalia in the four years to the next plenipotentiary? For us, it's more about connectivity, content, and making sure more access to more people. Now, in Somalia, again, because we have a very active private sector, we want to make sure that all get access to the IT industry. Not just the people who are in the cities, the people who can afford, but almost everyone. For that to happen, again, bigger role for the government and ensuring that the, the private sector, the telecom operators, pay, play their role, pay tax, ensure that everyone gets access, not just in Mogadishu and the big cities, but everywhere else as well. Do you think that ICTs are sufficiently recognized as development catalysts? And should ICTs be part of the future UN Sustainable Development Goals? And if so, why do you think? I think that that's the way it should be. And it's very unfortunate, for example, if you look at the Millennium Development Goals, for some reason, ICT wasn't mentioned, and, and that is a big gap for me. And I think we learn as we move forward, and as we can see how much ICT contributes to the development of nations, how much it contributes to the GB, GDP of economies, that there's no more uh, time to ignore ICT. Again, if I use Somalia as an example, after 20 years or more of uh, non-functioning government, and now we're coming out of that crisis time, the best way and the most fastest way to develop our country is through ICT. There's just no other shortcut, and we're trying to use ICT to develop our country. Minister, thank you very much indeed for being with us, and uh, wish you the very best, uh, certainly for the next four years, and if, of course, in, in beyond into the future too. You're welcome. I, I hope to see you again. We've been through Guadalajara, Dubai, Geneva, and now in Busan, so hopefully we'll see you again in the next plenary Thank you very much. Very much hope so. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you.